Okay, by now you've probably practiced a lot of completing the square problems. Um, what has happened in the past is um, a lot of people have done this before us and they've noticed a pattern or a formula that they could come up with um, where we could directly find the vertex without having to complete the square. So I'd like to share that with you now. Um, you see this in the notes and pretty much what you want to focus on is as long as you are in the general form ax squared plus bx plus c and you are a quadratic function, you can find the x value of the vertex by this formula. And then the way we've given it to you is in ordered pair form. So if you do know the x value of the vertex, you can plug it into the function and find the y value. And that's what we're talking about with f of negative b over 2a. So x value and y value. So I'd like to do this with one of our previous examples and let you kind of discover on your own with these next examples. Um, so I'm going to go back and look at um, what we did in example one, or if you weren't with us in example one, now we can kind of refresh ourselves. We are looking at f of x equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. So I'm going to take this off to the side. f of x equals 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. Let me remind myself, make sure I copied it down right, because that's usually the biggest battle x squared plus 6x minus 2, 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. Now, what this nice formula says is that we can find the x value of the vertex, and I will denote it with a subscript, by plugging in the formula negative b over 2a. So if we look at our quadratic function in general form, uh, if you were to kind of label your parts, you would see that a is equal to 3, b is equal to 6, and c is equal to negative 2. Now, you don't have to uh, have the c term, but it's nice to kind of get in the habit. So all we do with the x value, we're going to plug in. Uh, instead of b, we'll say 6. Instead of a, we'll plug in 3. And we will compute the value. So we do have negative. Um, 6 over all 2 times 3 is 6. 6 over 6 is negative 1. So we do have the x value of the vertex. And what's really nice about the vertex formula is if you do know the x value, you can directly find the y value by plugging it in to your function. So y value of the vertex, also known as, whoops, I'll write this down, f of negative 1. Uh, we're going to plug it into 3x squared, so 3 times negative 1 squared, plus 6 times negative 1 minus 2. Do a little bit of math. So we end up getting 3 times 1. Now, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6 minus 2. So what do we have? 3 minus 6 minus 2. So 3 minus 6, negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. We should have our y value of the vertex. So you could show your work or you can just restate, hey, the vertex is negative 1, negative 5. So we should be good to go. Um, and we want to check maybe, does it match with our previous findings from completing the square? Or vice versa. Um, so let's double check. So that's the answer to this. And even though you may not be related to this problem, let's see. Where's our vertex again? Negative 1, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 5. So we do know it works. So sometimes um, if you get tied up on completing the square, you could use this as a, as a uh, check to see if, if your completing the square process worked. Or if you forget the vertex formula, you can go with completing the square and go through it this way. So hope this helps. See you next time.